based in international practices. The name is uh, Against Discrimination, Memory to Stop Romaphobia, a European vision. Um, first of all, I would like to shape a little bit um, this, the moment that we are facing now, because I think it's quite a, a worrying trend for all of us. Uh, discrimination and hate speech towards minorities are increasing. Also, far-right movements and authoritarian political parties are more present in our society. And this affects minorities, in this case uh, affects uh, Roma population. While hate um, is spreading in society, um, Roma people are resisting uh, discriminatory practices. For example, we can say that um, access to education, unemployment, um, discriminatory practices made by the police, and social exclusion. But racism is not new. Romaphobia has been present toward the whole European history. Roma people have resisted uh, discriminatory practices, uh, discriminatory policies. They have been persecuted and targeted. Historical memory is an essential tool for prevent discrimination, and also a crucial tool for recognition and avoiding repetition. It's essential that all of us, for example, remember Samudari Pen, that, as was explained before, it was the genocide um, hap that happened during the Second World War to Roma people, where half a million were killed by the Nazi regime. Um, and memory shows us that um, not only in the communities that are affected, but also the whole community, the whole societies are affected, and democratic values um, are, are feeling under, undermined. To address this issue, it's important that we promote initiatives and also activities uh, that highlight the Roma contribution to the society as an historical way or an artistic way or in other ways. Um, memory is not just looking at the past, but it's a dynamic tool to look to the future and to try to get tools, understand what happened in the past and combat racism and Romaphobia today. Um, in order to talk a little bit more about this European um, vision that we are talking today, um, I have with me three very special people here, um, representing uh, three different um, countries in Europe. We have on the first place Leif Haggard from Finland, Chiara Nencioni from Italy, and Emir Gervic from Croatia. So, first of all, I will introduce Leif Haggard. Uh, he is part of the Roma Association of Finland and Roma Youth Forum in Finland. He is an activist and expert on Roma people, and he won the Young European of the Year Award in 2021 and promoter of the Roma History Month in collaboration with the Peace Education Institute in Finland. Next to him, uh, we have Anu Railastau Moran, who is also part of the um, Education Institute in Finland, who will help us with the, with the translation. Leif, thank you for being here. Um, I remember that each speaker has 20 minutes in total, so between 15, 20 minutes, so we have time for questions for the public. Thank you, Leif. Okay, 
can you hear Leif now? Can he speak? <laughs> now, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now you don't have to eat it. Yeah, that is fine. Uh, no, ensinnäkin mulla on tosi tärkeän aiheen äärellä täällä, ja mä olen tunnen itseni hyvin etuoikeutetuksi, kun mä saan olla täällä tänään teidän kanssa. Thank you. We're talking about very important things here today, and I feel privileged to be here with you. Mä tulen Suomesta, ja me puhutaan Suomen romanien kulmalla tästä asiasta. Ö, eli lyhyt esittely Suomen romaneista. Romanit saapuivat Suomeen noin 500 vuotta sitten. Kuten Euroopassa, niin myös Suomessa viranomaishistoria romaneita kohtaan on sisältänyt torjuntaa, hävitystä, kontrollia ja assimilaatiota. Hävityksestä esimerkiksi voisi mainita 1637 vuonna säädetyn hirttolain, joka oli, yksi, joka oli yli 100 vuotta voimassa, ja assimilaatiosta vielä 1960-luvulla toteutettu toteutettua romanilasten huostaanottoa lasten koteihin, jossa he eivät saaneet, saaneet mitenkään ylläpitää kulttuuriaan tai kieltään. Suomen romanikieli onkin hyvin heikossa tilassa, kielen puhujia ei ole monia. So we are going to begin with a short introduction uh, to the history of the Finnish Roma. The Roma arrived in Finland about 500 years ago. Much like the rest of the Europe, the Finnish Roma have also faced discrimination, destruction, control and assimilation by authorities. The execution by hanging legislation drafted in 1637 and abolished only a hundred years later gives an example of the destruction faced by the Roma. And as an example of assimilation up to the 1960s, many Roma children were taken into custody and placed in orphanages, where they were not allowed to preserve their culture or language in any way. Hence, the Finnish Roma language is in a very weak state with only a few speakers. Suomessa romaneilla oli kiertävä elämäntyyli vielä 1970-luvun puoliväliin asti, joka johtui asunnottomuudesta. Kun kunnille tuli velvoite asuttaa romanit, romanien ei tarvinnut enää kiertää etsien yösiaa tai asua kesäisin teltoissa. Up to the mid-1970s, the Finnish Roma lived a traveler life due to homelessness. Once municipalities were obligated to organize housing for the Roma, the Roma people no longer had to roam around looking for a place to stay or live in a tent in the summertime. Vasta tämän myötä romanien kouluttautuminen alkoi. Eli romanien koulutuksen historia on nuori. Ja tämä näkyy nykypäivänä romani, romanien Tämä näkyy nykypäivänä romanien koulutuksen tasossa. Meillä ei ole monia yliopiston käyneitä romaneita. 2000-luvulla ollaan vasta päästy tilanteeseen, jossa romanit ovat käyneet esi- ja peruskoulun. Toisen asteen opiskeluissa on vakiintunut käytäntö vasta viimeisen kymmenen vuoden sisällä, ja tästä on nyt alettu menemään korkeakouluopintoja kohti. Tämä on lähtötilanne. It was only after this that the path to education opened for the Roma. Thus, one could safely say that the history of the educated Roma in Finland is quite short. This, in turn, is reflected in the level of education of the Roma. There are still not that many university graduates amongst us. Just now, in the 21st century, we have reached a situation where the Roma attend both preschool as well as primary and lower secondary schools. Upper secondary school degrees have only become a standard in the past decade and aiming at higher education is now something we work towards. This is the situation we find ourselves in now. Miksi on tärkeää puhua romanien historiasta? Suomen romanien historia ei opita peruskouluissa historian tunneilla. Suomen historia käsitellessä. Romanien 500-vuotinen historia Suomessa 
on värikäs. Se pitää sisällä muun muassa romaneihin kohdistettua rasismia, syrjinnän muotoja ja valtion eri keinoja toteuttaa niitä. Se pitää sisällään myös romanien ja valtaväestön yhteiseloa, ristiriitoineen ja sopusointuineen, samojen haasteiden kohtaamista, yhteen hiilen puhaltamista ja yhdessä Suomen rakentamista. Why is it important to discuss the history of the Roma in Finland? When Finnish history is taught uh, in primary and lower secondary education, the history of the Finnish Roma is not talked about. The 500-year-old history of the Finnish Roma is indeed colorful. It has, for example, racism towards the Roma, different forms of discrimination, and several different ways of putting this racism and discrimination into practice by the state. But it has also seen the Roma and the majority population living together in harmony, despite their disagreements, facing the same challenges, and coming together to build Finland. Historiallisen faktatiedon puuttuminen on myös mahdollistanut erilaisten romaneihin liitettyjen negatiivisten ja rasististen stereotypioiden pääsemisen asemaan, jossa niitä ei kyseenalaisteta, vaan niitä pidetään faktoina. Monelle romaneihin liittyville, äh, liittyville negatiivisille stereotypioille löytyy historiallinen konteksti. Tietous näistä auttaisi ymmärtämään, mistä sukupolvelta toiselle siirretyt mielikuvat ja niin sanotut faktat ovat saaneet alkunsa. Tämän myötä monen olisi helpompi tunnistaa ja kyseenalaistaa romaneihin kohdistuvia negatiivisia asenteita ja oletuksia. The lack of historical knowledge has enabled different negative and racist stereotypes related to the Roma, where they are now considered to be the truth without a shadow of a doubt. However, many negative stereotypes related to the Roma are bound to specific historical context. Being aware of this context would be essential to understanding where the prejudices and so-called facts passed on from one generation to another stem from. This awareness would also help many people recognize and question the negative attitudes and prejudices, uh, prejudices they have towards the Rome. Moni kyseenalaistaa edelleen romanien suomalaisuuden. Joissakin tapauksissa kyse voi olla rasismista, mutta, mutta yleisemmin kyse on tietämättömyydestä. Suomen peruskoulujen historiassa opetus on hyvin valkonormatiivista, joka jättää tilaa mielikuvalle valkoisesta Suomesta. Tästä johtuen Suomessa medialla toimittajilla on heikko tieto suomalaisesta rasismista ja sen historiasta. Toistuvasti mediassa joutuu lukemaan virheellistä väittämää, että Suomi ei olisi ollut historiassaan moninainen tai että rasismi olisi Suomessa suhtuusi ilmiö. There are still many who question the Finnishness of the Roma. In some cases this is racism, but most often it is just ignorance. The history taught in Finnish primary and lower secondary school is relatively white normative, which easily gives an impression of a white Finland. Hence, the knowledge regarding Finnish racism and its history among the Finnish media and the Finnish journalists is at a low level. A constant incorrect claim given by the media in Finland is that uh, Finland has not been multicultural in the past and that racism would be a relatively new concept in Finland. Ja tämähän ei pidä ollenkaan paikkaansa. Olemme ystäväni Päivi Majaniemen kanssa naureskeleet mediassa vastaan tulleille väittämälle, että Suomessa ei osattaisiin suhtautua rasismiin, koska Suome, Suomi ei ole ollut monikulttuurinen maa aiemmin, niin kuin monet muut maat ovat olleet. Mihin unohtui se, kun Suomi oli Ruotsin vallan alla tai Venäjän vallan alla? Missä ovat Suomen vanhat vähemmistöt, tataarit, juutalaiset, karjalaiset, saamelaiset tai romanit? Su Suomessa on aina ollut erilaisia kulttuureja ja puhuttu erilaisia kieliä. So this is not true at all. With my friend Päivi Majaniemi, we have had a good laugh. It's out. No, there we go. <laughs> With my friend Päivi Majaniemi, we have had a good laugh about a statement claiming that Finns do not know how to deal with racism in Finland. Unlike in other countries, because Finland has not been a multicultural uh, cultural country for long. Well, what about the fact that fin Finland used to be under the Swedish and the Russian rule? What about our old minorities, the Tatars, the Jewish, the Karelians, the Sami and the Roma? Different cultures and different languages have always been present in Finland. 
pojalta lainata mikrofonia. Kun äärioikeistolainen asenne kasvaa ja rasismi, rasismi aletaan taas normalisoida, niin nyt viimeistään on aika lopettaa. Suomi on aina ollut valkoinen narratiivin ylläpitäminen. Ja yksi työkalu tähän on romanien historian näkyväksi tekeminen. Tuntemus, suo, tuntemus Suomessa aina olleesta moninaisuudesta, syrjinnän ja sorron historiasta auttaa tunnistamaan virheet ja vääryydet, mitä historiassa vähemmistöille on tehty. Me näemme Suomessa hyvin sen, mitä tapahtuu, kun epäkohtiin ei puututa. Aika legimitoinen. Väärästä tulee normi jota, ei, ö, normi, jota toistetaan, koska näin on aina tehty. With that right wing extremism being on the rise and racism becoming normalized again, it is about time to stop maintaining the narrative of Finland's past and present whiteness. One tool for this is to make the Roma history more visible. Acknowledging that Finland has always been a multicultural country and being aware of the history of discrimination and oppression helps recognize the injustice and wrongdoings minorities have faced in the past. In Finland, we can see very clearly what happens when injustice is not dealt with. Time legitimizes it. What is wrong soon becomes the norm that is repeated time after time just because the world has always worked that way. Suomessa voidaan puhua rasismista ja reagoida syrjintään, mutta romaneihin kohdistuva syrjintä on niin normaalia, että se usein vain sivutetaan. Esimerkiksi romanit kokevat laajaa syrjintää työnhaussa. Romanin on hyvin haastavaa päästä edes niihin töihin, joissa koulutusta tai aiempaa kokemusta alalta ei tarvita. Kun, roman, kun romaninainen pääsee kaupan kassalle töihin, se on meillä vielä niin poikkeuksellista, että media tekee siitä jutun. Jos romanin, pääsy, jos romanin pääsy kassatyöhön on niin poikkeuksellista, että se ylittää uutiskynnyksen, eikö tässä ole niin merkittävä epäkohta, jonka pitäisi ravistella yhteiskuntamme sitä vaivaavasta rasismista hereille. Näin ei käynyt. Uutinen jätettiin vähälle huomiolle. In Finland, we can talk about racism and react to discrimination, but the discrimination against the Roma has become so normal at this point that it is often just ignored. The Roma experience, for example, wide-scale employment-related discrimination. It is extremely challenging for a Roma to acquire a job with no requir requirement for education or previous work experience. It is such an exceptional case for a Roma woman to get a job as a cashier that the media wants to cover it. If a Roma working as a cashier really breaks the news, isn't this an indicator of a major fault in our society that should act as a wake-up call regarding the racism raging in our society? Unfortunately, the story about the Roma woman working as a cashier did not receive much attention, and hence there was no great awakening. Se, että meillä Suomessa kyettäisiin kohtaamaan romaneihin kohdistuva rasismi ja syrjintä yhtä rationaalisesti kuin muihin ryhmiin kohdistuva, vaatii sitä, että meidän historiamme tiedetään. Tunnistetaan se rodullistamisen malli, ymmärretään tämänhetkinen antichipsistinen tapa nähdä ja kohdella romaneita. Se ei ole normaalia, sille ei ole oikeutusta. Se on historiasta tuleva vääryys, jota ei ole vielä kyseenalaistettu, jota ei ole vielä osattu tuomita. Tehtyjen vääryksien tunnistamisen myötä ihmisille voi syntyä halu olla toistamatta historiaa. Tähän minä haluan uskoa. In order for Finns to face the racism and discrimination against the Roma in the same way as we face racism and discrimination against other minorities, the history of the Roma needs to be acknowledged. Finns need to recognize the model of racialization and understand that the anti-gypsy way of seeing and treating the Roma is not normal and in no way justified. This injustice with its deep roots in the past has yet not been questioned and thus not condemned in Finland. By recognizing the wrongdoings, there is a chance of creating a shared will of not wanting to repeat the history. This is something I want to believe in. 
Miksi on tärkeää puhua romanien historiasta? Katsotaan asiaa romani-identiteetin kannalta. Monen romanin romani-identiteetti on heikko. Tämä näkyy muun muassa sisäistettynä rasismina, itseinhona, häpeänä romaniuudesta. Meitä ympäröivä yhteiskunta ei puhu meistä kauniisti. Romaniuuteen on liitetty muiden toimesta vahvoja negatiivisia stereotypioita. Sana romani tai mustalainen käytetään synonyymeinä, kun jotakin ihmistä halutaan haukkua. Meille myös tarjotaan mahdollisuutta menestyä elämässä, jos me piilotamme romaniuutemme esimerkiksi vaihtamalla nimeä. Ei kukaan halua olla epäonnistuja tai pilkkanimi muille. The Roma identity. Um, we're going to now discuss uh, the history of Roma through uh, the Roma identity point of view. So the Roma identity of many Roma in Finland is not strong. This can manifest itself in internalized racism, self-hatred or shame of being a Roma. The society around us does not talk about us very kindly. There are many negative stereotypes associated with being a Roma. The words Rom Romani or Gypsy are used interchangeably as belittling names. We are offered the possibility to succeed in life as long as we hide our background by changing our names, for, us then, for instance. No one wants to be seen as a failure or a target of ridicule. Romanien täytyy päästä asemaan, jossa he näkevät oman historiansa arvon ja ottavat siitä omistajuuden. Tähän pisteeseen pääsemiseen tarvitaan sitä, että romanien historia pidetään esillä, saadaan yhteiskunnallista kiinnostusta ja puhetta siitä. Romanista voi puhua muutenkin kuin negatiivisen tulokulman kautta. Monen romanin sisäistämä rasismi ja itse inhon vaikutus näkyy muun muassa heikkona mielenkiintona ja tiedon puutteena omasta historiasta. Jos muut yhteiskunnassa puhuvat ja mediassa huomioisivat meidän historiaa, niin se välittää viestiä, viestin, että meilläkin on oikeus puhua siitä ja tuntea ylpeyttä siitä. Tietämys omasta historiastaan antaisi vankan ja terveen tuen romani identiteetille. The Roma people need to see the significance of their own history and take ownership of it. In order to achieve this, we need to promote the Roma history, raise social interest and encourage discussions related to it. When talking about the Roma, the negative approach is not the only way to approach the topic. Racism and self-hatred many Roma people have internalized manifest itself as a lack of interest and knowledge towards their own culture, for example. If the society and media talked about and took our history into account, it would pass uh, Roma people a message of having the right to talk about it and even take pride in their own history. Knowing one's own history would create a strong and healthy base for Roma identities. Tähän asti romanien historiaa. Tähän asti romanien historia on ollut muiden kuin romanien kirjoittamaa. Romanien historia on ollut tutkijoiden ja historioitsijoiden käsissä. Jos romanien koulustaso olisi erilainen, myös tämä tilanne voisi olla toisenlainen. Mutta kun tilanne on mitä on, niin historiamme, kielemme ja kulttuurimme asiantuntijat näyttävät tulevan valtaväestöstä. Toki he ovat osana tutkimusprosessiaan haastatelleet ja kuulleet romaneita, eli näin olemme olleet mukana. Mutta tutkijat ovat määritelleet, mistä puhutaan, millä kulmalla ja kuinka. Suomen romaneilla on myös heikko luottamus viranomaisia ja tutkimuksia kohtaan. Ja tämä varmasti myös vaikuttaa siihen, mitä romanit noissa haastatteluissa haluavat tai uskaltavat jakaa. Up until now, the history of the Roma has been written by other than the Roma themselves. It has been in the hands of researchers and historians. If the educational level of the Roma was different, the situation we are living in could be very different too. But as it is what it is, the experts of our history, language and culture all seem to belong to the majority population. Naturally, these experts have interviewed and heard the stories of the Roma during their research projects. So we have been included in these projects in a way. But what the researchers have not been able to define, it, uh, have been able to define is the topics for discussion as well as the approach to these discussions. 
The Finnish Roma hold a relatively low trust in authorities and research studies. This surely affects what the Roma feel they want or dare to share in the interview situations. Suomen valtion tuki ja toimet romanien historiaa kohtaa ovat olleet heikot. Vuonna 2012 julkaistiin Panu Pulman toimittama Suomen romanien historiakirja. Tätä oli tukemassa opetus- ja kulttuuriministeriö. Tämän enempää ei ole ollut eikä tällä hetkellä ole tukea valtiolta suoraan Suomen romanien historiaan liittyen. Panu Pulman toimittama teos on hyvä ja laaja, melkein 500-sivuinen opus. Kuinka todennäköistä on, että matalammasta, matalammasta sosioekonomisesta asemasta tulevat henkilöt, tässä tapauksessa romanit, lukisivat tuon kirjan? Kirjan ensimmäisellä sivulla mainitut Ruotsin kuninkaat, Karlet kumppaneineen, eivät välttämättä lisää lukuintoa, jos kirja, kirjaan on alun perin tartuttu lukeakseen romanien historiasta. Kyse on saavutettavuudesta. The support for the Roma history given by the Finnish state has not been strong. In 2012, a book written by Panu Pulma about the history of the Finnish Roma was published. The Finnish Ministry of Education and Culture was one of the supporters of this book. This is the amount the history of the Finnish Roma has received support from the state uh, up to this day. Pulma's book is great and very extensive piece of work with nearly 500 pages. But how likely would a person with a, so, a lower social economic status, such as uh, Roma in this case, read the book? The names of the multiple Swedish kings mentioned uh, on the first pages of the book may not spark an interest to read the book further if the initial intention has been to familiar, uh, familiarize oneself with the history of the Roma. This is a matter of accessibility. Me toteutimme Huhtikuussa 2023 romanihistorian kuukauden. Kampanja koostui kuukauden ajan päivittäin sosiaalisessa mediassa julkaistavista lyhyistä tarinoista ja historiallisista faktoista. Tarinat oli kerätty iäkkäimmiltä romaneilta ja tarinat sijoittuivat 50-70-luvun Suomeen. Tarinoita kerätessä tuli myös esille se, että mitä tarinoita niin sanotusti uskaltaa kertoa. Esimerkiksi viinan myynnistä kertoo Kertovaa tarinaa kertoessa vanhus mietti, että voiko sitä kertoa julkisesti, aiheutuuko siitä romaneille haittaa. Tarinan tapaus on tapahtunut vuosikymmeniä sitten. Se on tarina selviytymisestä ja se huipentuu inhimillisyyteen ja välittämiseen. Tuokaan tarina ei olisi nähnyt päivänvaloa, jos, siitä ei olisi ollut, jos siinä ei olisi ollut haastattelijana ja kirjoittajana toista romania. In April 2023, we dedicated the whole month to the history of the Roma. The Roma History Month campaign consisted of daily short stories and historical facts published on social media for one month. The stories were told by the elderly Roma people and they were set in Finland of 1950s and 1970s. While collecting the stories, the question of what one can dare to share came up. One elderly person, for, uh, for instance, wondered if they can publicly tell a story about selling alcohol without affecting the Roma people negatively. The incident had taken place decades ago, and the story was all about survival, humanity, and taking care of one another. Had the interviewer and writer not been another Roma person, the story would never have been shared. Roman historian kuukau Kuukaudesta, romanin historian kuukaudesta romanilta tulleet palautteet olivat positiivisia. Vaikka somepostauksissa käsiteltiin myös raskaita ja ikäviä aiheita, oli monen romanin palaute vielä kampanjan päättymisen jälkeen, että niitä oli kiva lukea. Tätä kampanjaa ennen romanien, historiaa ei ole, romanien historia ei ole ollut näin esillä somessa. Meidän historiallamme on väliä. Se on aika tehdä näkyväksi. Historiamme vaatii tunnistamista ja tunnustamista. The feedback concerning the Roma History Month was positive. Although some of the social media posts were a bit weightier, many Roma people expressed it had been a pleasant to read the stories, even long after the campaign had ended. Before this campaign, the history of the Roma had never received such attention in social media. Our history matters and it's time to make it visible.
Our history requires recognition and acknowledgement. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you, Leif. Thank you also, Anu, for the help. And thank you, Leif, for explaining us that sometimes when the state doesn't promote historical and memories about the Roma people, there are still civil society who are aware, no civil society and young people who are aware to use new technologies and new tools to spread the history. So thank you, Leif. Um, now I have next to me Chiara Nencioni. She's part of the University of Pisa and Florence in Italy. She's affiliated for the Ferruccio Parri National Institute for Resistance and Contemporary Story. And she researches about contemporary story and politics, the Roma people, the Balkans, and also the Holocaust. So, Chiara, I'm happy to have you here. I try? Okay, it works. So, hi everybody. I'm very glad to be here. I would like to thank you all for being here, and in particular, Eurom and Novact um, for inviting me. I'm so glad to talk about um, gypsy, that are not right to call them gypsy or zingari in, Itali in Italian language, but Roman Sinti, because they are Really, really unknown in Italy, and they are uh, in a bad condition because of stereotypes and prejudices. So, this talk, this talk is about gypsy persecution by Italian fascist dictatorship and the memories of such a crime in present Italian society, where also nowadays gypsies are victims of eight speeches and segregation. Fascist totalitarianism persecuted the Sinti in Roma. Starting in the 20s, fascist politics progressively radicalized, outlying four periods of reference. The first one is between 1922-1938. The rejections and forced removal of gypsy foreigners, or presumed to be such, from the Italian territory. The second one is 1938-1940, the ethnic cleansing against all gypsies in the border regions, especially northeast, and their confinement in Sardinia and other isolated places. The third period is 1940-1943, the arrest of all gypsies, either foreigners or Italian, and the creation of a network of concentration camps in Italy that were uniquely reserved to gypsies. And the last and the worst one is between 1943-1945, the arrest of all gypsy by the Italian Social Republic and the deportation to Nazi concentration camp. The whole process towards the persecution of Roman Sinti in Italy was supported by studies of university professors, including Guido Landra and Renato Semizzi, who elaborated and disseminated the concept relating to gypsies a race, an inferiority in the psycho-moral sphere and the innate tendency towards nomadism and criminality. Poraimos in Italy is very little known. During the first decade of the second millennium, documents relating to Roman Sinti concentration were published between 2012-2013. The European Union founded project called Memors was set up. This is the first virtual museum um, of the Poraimos in Italy. You can see the web page of this project. It is also translated uh, into English. 
The project is aimed to reconstruct the history and the memory of deportation of Cynthia Roma, putting documents online, collecting interviews to witnesses, promoting initiatives at memorial site, and actively involving the Roma and Cynthia population. This January, in January, so 2023, was set up the project REM Against DISM, reinforcing historical memory of the Porimos to combating discrimination. It is in continuity with new memoirs, and it aims to reconstruct the memory of the discrimination and the persecution that the Roman saints suffered during the Nazi fascism period and afterwards, in order to build a build a more inclusive society today. It is important to spread knowledge about Porimos and to include this topic in school books. In Italy, we have nothing about it in school books. Something about a Jewish persecution, of course, but not persecution against other minorities, in particular, Sinti and Roma. This, uh, there is a link between Nazi and fascist discrimination and the persecution of gypsies and racial prejudice that still survives. Let's see the connection. Hermann Arnold, never accused or persecuted, was a German medical officer. He died just a few years ago in 2005. He was primary, uh, primarily known as a gypsy expert. Fully convinced about the genetics controlling of Roma population using sterilization. I want to underline that the sterilization in uh, Europe, for instance in Switzerland, stopped only in uh, uh, 1980. His publication, in particular the Zigoiner, became a masterpiece of gypsy studies. In his book, Arnold affirmed that the primitiveness of gypsies, their inability to reach a normal IQ. According to the, his theory, he formulated the gypsy in pedagogy that will be the basis of many experiences and experiments of Roma and children education, even in Italy which has been scientifically and politically criticized only in the 80s. In Italy, around 1960, there were neither knowledges nor memory of Porimos, but Arnold's book was very popular. So, educationalist Mirella Carpati, in collaboration with Don Bruno Nicolini, in 1963 founded an association called Opera Nomadi. Recognized as a moral and non-profit association by presidential degree in 1970, Opera Nomadi is present throughout, is still present throughout the country with 27 sections from Bolzano, north, to Sicily, south, with over uh, 500 members. It aims to promote integration of Roma, Sinti, and traveler minorities into Italian society, to obtain the recognition of Roma and Sinti as an ethnic and linguistic minority, to counter widespread prejudices about the Roma population in particular, and to exercise cultural mediation between these minorities and the majority culture. Since the 60s, uh, Roman culture was quite unknown. Stereotypes were persisting, such as uh, dangerous, nomad, retardated. In 1963, Carpati started a gypsy pedagogical program called Romano Tem, that means uh, gypsy world, and carried out IQ tests on gypsy babies evaluating IQ between 0.81 and 0.96, so between low and medium levels. It was this conviction that led the Opera Nomadi members to create special classes called Lachodrom, regarding Roma children without such skills to study with other children, 
and put them into special schools for, the men for mentality challenged babies that caused the preservation of stereotypes about this minority and the permanence of social exclusion in the present. It was a kind of a cultural ethnocide. Latch drum classes uh, were the first explicit statal attempts uh, to assimilate gypsies. They were officially abolished in uh, 1977, but in some Italian cities, uh, latch drum classes uh, remained active until at least uh, the middle of the uh, 80s. It is estimated that there is an uh, average about um, of course, now <laughs> the school inclusion of Roma and Sinti is still problematic, you know. In Italy, it is estimated that there is an average about 150,000 Roma, so 0 .20, 0 0.23 of Italian population. Uh, you can see it's a small number, but in absolute and in relative terms. Due to the enlargement of the European Union to East between 2004 to 2007, around 2 million Roma became European citizens. Many countries such as Italy, but no, not only Italy, France, Great Britain, Belgium, tried to restrict their freedom of movement. The fear of invasion, manipulated to the distorted use of data, stories, and images, is what many governments used to justify the drastic measures they have taken to stop the Roma arrive. In a country like Italy, with an exaggerated political and public debate against Roma, this has fostered the spread of xenophobic and anti-Gypsian behavior. In Italy, the percentage of Roma and Sinti children under the age of 16 is 45%. So it's three times higher than the national average, that is only 15%. We are, we are a country for old people. It is therefore a population of young people with a high birth rate but a low life expectancy. The percentage of over 60s is 3%, so it's about one tenth of the national average for the same age group, that is 25%. This is due to precarious living condition. The Roma people face poverty, social exclusion, and racism on a daily basis. But the two separate phenomena, poverty and racism, are closely linked. A report in 2013 by the 21 July Association about anti-Gypsyism in Italy comes to the conclusion that the stereotypes about Roma are fooled by politicians' statements and press reports. According to the reports in Italy, 1.43 cases of uh, incitement to hatred and discrimination against Roma and Sinti were recorded every day, mostly through statements by politicians spread by newspapers, websites, and social networks. Stereotypes and the prejudices towards these communities are fueled by a daily average of 1.86, so quite two incidents of misinformation by local and national media. 75% of cases of incitement to hatred are uh, to address to politicians, of which 59% related to members of the right-wing or center-right parties. You know, now we have quite fascism at the government, so you can imagine the situation in Italy nowadays. So 58 of cases of incitement to hatred are to address to private citizens and 20% to journalists. Newspaper first disseminated speeches, followed by website, Twitter, and Facebook. From the geographical location point of view, its speeches in the center north of Italy uh, were 
uh, parties like Lega Nord, that is a very right oriented, that was born, take the relative lead with the 52% of whom 22 in Lomb Lombardy. Lombardia is the um, richer region in Italy, alone. In the center south stands at 43%. The most significant data regards the city of Rome, so Italian capital, which alone covers about 32%, practically a third of the entire national territory, where about 5,050 uh, 5, Roman citizens live in nomad camps. I will later talk about nomad camps, and remain uh, social marginalized and deprived of jobs and rights. The first problem are the nomad camps. This is a reality that, with very few exceptions, does not exist in other European countries, uh, characterized by inhuman and degrading condition of cruel marginalization, incompatible with any project of inclusion and integration. Roman settlements are often destroyed without any regards for replacement housing. Even if the vast majority of Roman Sinti, four out of five in Italy, live in houses, study, work, and lead a life like any other Italian or foreign citizen living in the country, reports of degradation in nomad camps prevail. The political debate on the closure of Roman camps has been going on for 10 years, but according to UNAR, UNAR is the National Anti-Racism Discrimination Office. Uh, so UNAR report dated September 2023, so just two months ago, about 26,000 Sinti and Roma are still in housing emergency, and 109 open-air mono-ethnic settlements remain. The second problem regards the education of children living in nomad camps. 20% 20 20 of them never starts his schooling or had a, a regular attendance. Teenagers drop out of school early, and only 1% go to university. The third problem concerns work. Being recognized in Roma is an obstacle to finding a job, even for those who had starting job or starting training courses and looked promising. The last problem I want to highlight is that of participation in politics. Roma and Sinti people do not have sufficient public representation. There is a proliferation of anti-Roman prejudice. Indeed, Italy and Czech Republic have the highest percentage of hostility towards Roman Sinti in Europe. According to the data from Italian Ministry of Interior, 81% of Italians like Sinti and Roma little or not at all. The judgments associated with Gypsy are types, 92%, closed, 87%, living in camps on the edge of cities by choice, 83%, marginalized, 65%, with a strong sense of freedom, 85%. According to Eurobarometer, that is a European value survey, 47 of Italians feel uncomfortable with the idea of having a Roma as a neighbor, and only 7% answered yes at the question, are you willing to have Roma friends? In general, Italians have a negative opinion about Sinti and Roma. They are people less liked in Italy. So the worst category. The growing anti-Gypsy in, Itali in Italian society is reached in recent years 
has led to several warnings towards Italy by international institutions, such as the Council of Europe in 2008, 2009, and 2011, and the third, that is a Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination ruled by United Nations. The report commissioned by the uh, Senate Human Rights Commission in 2021 pointed out a reluctance to declare oneself Roma. This is because of general tendency to link to the imaging of Roma and Sinti every form of deviance and the criminality. The image of Roman Sinti in Italy is marked by a lack of knowledge just 56% of Italians say they have no idea how many Roma live in Italy. And 84% of Italians believe that these groups are mainly nomads. Only 25% know that about half of Roma are Italian citizens. Their story a little known, partly because many Romans are reluctant to reveal their identity for fear, for, uh, for hostile prejudice. Okay. So what is the Italian government doing to contrast it? UNAR implemented the first national strategy for the inclusion of Roma and Sintian travelers between 2012-2020, and the second national strategy for equality, inclusion, and participation of Roma and Sinti, 2021-2030, was adopted last May, the 23 of May, 2023. And what are Roma and Sinti communities doing to contrast prejudices? Four years ago, UCRI, that is Italian Union Romanes Communities, was born. It is a non-profit federation that aims to eradicate welfareism and to enhance the Romani culture free of stereotypes in all forms, to make Poraimos officially recognized and to have Italian government approve the law on the recognition of linguistic minorities in Italy. UCRI struggles to guarantee stable houses and equal rights. In 2021, UCRI founded the National Romania Academy, you can see the website, that offers free courses about Roma culture, anti-gypsism, and Poraimos. And what are the cultural and research centers and the university doing to fight against discrimination and to let people know about Poraimos? In 2021, a book trilogy titled Attraversare Auschwitz, so going through Auschwitz, by Luca Bravi from the University of Florence and Eva Ritzin, that is uh, Roma, from the University of Verona, was published. A photographic ex exhibition titled Memoria Sinti was set up in Bologna last June. Memors, the virtual museum about, about Poraimos in Italy, was renewed in January. In the past, only two mem memoirs, it's about for you, <laughs> Uh, only two memoirs written by Italian gypsies uh, were published. The first one was Zigani, Vita di un Rom, by Giuseppe Legvakovic in 1975. The second one, Strada, Sin Strada Patria Sinta, by Nugo Debar in 1998. But in this year, in 2023, Laio de Ragna, Iaio de is a uh, Roma, published Vita in Cammino, the autobiography of a Roma family in Milan. And Yuki Herzenberger published Il Diario di Yuki, a unique document of its kind. Set between the 50s and today is an intense autobiographical journey in a daily struggle for survival. In this January began the second project, reinforcing the historical memory on Poraimos to combat the discrimination, and some historical institutes for resistance and the contemporary history, for example, the one in Modena, Lucca, Grosseto, and the university, for example, Florence and the Chieti, give conferences, training courses, workshops for teachers and students. 
my essay, A Forza di Essere Vento, will be printed in January, next January, so in January 2024. The book is composed by two parts. The first one is an historical essay about the fascist persecution, concentration, and deportation of Roma people. And the second one contains transcriptions of testimonies given by Roma and Sinti witnesses of first and second generation persecuted by fascism. And that's all. Thank you for listening. Chiara, thank you very much for, for your intervention. Um, as a good teacher, you have sh done to us a very good history lesson of the Poraimos in Italy. And what I liked the most and what I extract about your speech is like how the little knowledge of Roma people affects to hate speech and yeah. Romaphobia. So Chiara, thank you very much. And now uh, we have the third speech. Uh, from Emir Gervic. He is part of the Croatian Romani Union Kalisara okay. and Rome Memorial Center Ustica in Croatia. He is a political advisor. He is an expert in human rights and minority rights and member of the Croatian delegation of the IHRA, that is the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. And he is also a member of the Human Rights Council of the Croatian government. Emir, thank you for being here. The floor is yours. Um, thank you, Nuria. Um, thank you for having me here. Thank, thank you to Novak. No, it's like this. Uh, to Novak and Eurorom. Uh, and for the opportunity to share the Croatian experience. Uh, first of all, I wanted to speak uh, only about uh, what you here in Spain call democratic uh, memory or memory policies in Croatia. But uh, from a uh, conversation with you and uh, with uh, other colleagues here, I, I noticed that uh, uh, not a lot uh, has, uh, is known here about uh, Croatia. So I uh, changed my <laughs> presentation a little bit and I sketched some uh, facts uh, here that uh, I want to share. Uh, I also want to greet uh, Seo Cizmic here. He's uh, from Barcelona. Uh, he's uh, a very well-known uh, uh, member of, uh, Cal international member of Calisara and he uh, very often visits us in Croatia and participates in our events. So uh, any of you that find uh, things that I will speak about interesting can also contact Seo here in Barcelona. He can be our link uh, between Croatia here and uh, Catalonia uh, and Spain. Um, I work um, as an advisor to um, MP, me member of the parliament in the, Cro uh, in the Croatian parliament, Veljko Kajtazi, and I also work for the Croatian Romani Union Kalisara. Uh, I want to give you a little bit more uh, of a frame to understand how minorities uh, in Croatia uh, work and uh, how uh, minorities in Croatia are organized. So uh, Roma community in Croatia, then uh, in the second part I will go back to the central topic uh, of the memory and uh, what we did uh, about it, but uh, it's uh, important to understand what uh, is um, done uh, on a more global level. So uh, Roma community in Croatia is uh, uh, very diverse. We have around 17,000 uh, uh, members of the uh, Roma community in Croatia, and they are just one of 22 recognized national minorities by the Croatian constitution. So uh, besides this, um, uh, we have eight members uh, of parliament uh, uh, from uh, national minorities, and uh, one of them is uh, Mr. Ketazi, and he represents 12 national minorities. So he doesn't only represent the Roma national minority, but 11 others. Um, national minorities are also, um, most of them are organized uh, uh, in NGOs. And uh, with years, it became like this, that uh, uh, every national minority has its own head organization. So Croatian Romania Union uh, was founded more than 15 years ago, and it started to work with uh, language, just uh, preserva preservation of 
uh, Romani language, uh, and um, Calisaria is actually best known uh, uh, for introducing the World uh, Day of Roma language. Uh, that was uh, later uh, recognized by UNESCO, and it's marked uh, all, all, all around Europe, to, and of course also here in Barcelona uh, by Seos uh, Gizmis. So th this was the start of uh, Calisara. It, it, it was uh, a beginning uh, with uh, the first uh, Roma uh, uh, dictionary, Croatian uh, uh, Roma, Roma Croatian dictionary, that was published in 2008. So, uh, a little bit more about the structure of um, uh, Kalisara. Um, by our constitutional law, uh, we uh, also elect uh, local um, representatives of uh, national minorities. So, uh, Croatian-Romania Union serves as, um, when I say this is the head organization, it means that they also um, serve as an umbrella organization for for smaller NGOs, but also for the re uh, representatives that are elected uh, on elections in their local communities. So this is a, a sketch from 2017, I think, but it has to be updated. But the structure is like this. We have Roma organizations, we have uh, individual members, uh, we have uh, representatives uh, that are elected on minority elections, and we have also all kinds of different uh, uh, members. And I would say it's about 80% um, of the Roma community revolves uh, around um, Kalisara. Uh, like I said before, uh, the last census shows that we have 17, uh, almost 18,000 uh, uh, Roma people in uh, Croatia. And it's 0.46% uh, uh, of the whole population. So. It's not uh, very big, but these numbers um, can also be challenged because we think we at least have 25,000, some estimates say even 40,000 of uh, Roma. So this problem of Roma not uh, declaring themselves as Roma can be explained if you look at the other numbers also. You can see that um, uh, in 1948, we only have 405 uh, Roma on, on the census. So of course this is the this is the uh, uh, consequence of uh, uh, what Roma calls Samudari Pen or the genocide of the Roma in the Second World War. Uh, this is what I was uh, telling you uh, about a little bit earlier. So the start of Kalisara, it was only a, a small NGO that dealt with. Uh, language and later on it became uh, what it is now and this is uh, our president Susanna Kretschmar it's uh, very rarely that, that you see uh, a woman uh, leading uh, a Roma organization and this is the biggest one in Croatia so we are very proud uh, of that um, yes uh, so this is uh, our headquarters uh, in the city center of uh, Zagreb. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, our central office, and we also have, of course, uh, regional offices uh, and many other things that I will not be able to show you in this uh, short period. But uh, just a few photos. This is the the central uh, library of uh, the Roma in Croatia. It's also located in Zagreb in our central office. Uh, we are very proud uh, on the work that we do with the media. We have a Roma uh, educational and informational center. This is actually uh, MP Kajtazi speaking to our prime, current prime minister, uh, Andrei Plenković, in the, uh, our studio. We also have an uh, online radio, so you can also download it if you want from uh, any uh, uh, app for iPhone uh, oh, and uh, other smartphones, it's called uh, Radio Kalisara. Uh, this is uh, our magazine and uh, web portal, Pralipen, it's written in four languages, in Croatian, in Romani Chib, in English, and also in the language of the Roma, uh, Bajash Roma, that we uh, have in large numbers in Croatia. Um, this is uh, also one uh, of our biggest projects, not one of the, it is the biggest projects that we are working on now currently, and it's the construction of uh, European Roma Cultural Sports Center, and this, this center will, will be located 
um, on the coast uh, um, in Istria in Croatia and it will be it will look like this and it uh, will be uh, at the disposal for all uh, NGO Roma organizations from uh, around uh, uh, Europe um, it hopefully will be done in, in two years um, the biggest result of uh, our work in the six in the last six years I would say is the Roma Memorial Center Ustica. Uh this center was built uh, in 2018 uh, it, it started in the uh, end of 2016, so it took only um, one and a half year to build it. One, one and a half a year, year to build it. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, uh, the idea came, of course, from uh, our MP, uh, Veljko Kajtazi. Uh, in 2016, he became um, a part of the uh, coalition uh, with the government, and um, one big step that was introduced by the current government that is now serving the end of uh, its second term is the uh, additional document that they int introduced. Uh, like you know, it was mentioned uh, in the Italian case that uh, you also have national strategy for the Roma inclusion, but um, our experience was that uh, this document was not enough. Uh, so during the talks that we had with the government, we said we, we want uh, addition one additional document, and this document should be short. It should uh, list uh, the, the projects uh, that we want to do. It should say uh, who will do it, when will they do it, and money sh should be allocated to do this. So we had like 20 different activities there, and they dealt with all kinds of different um, needs of the Croatian Rom, uh, Roma community, education, uh, housing, uh, and so on. And one of the most important parts uh, of this uh, document was to build the Roma Memorial Center Ustica. So Ustica uh, is uh, located uh, next uh, to Jasenovac. Uh, Jasenovac was uh, a set of camps um, that uh, was set up by the independent state of Croatia. And this is unfortunately the largest single site in Europe of Roma executions. When I say the largest, the official numbers of the Asenovac institutions institution is 16,000 Roma were killed here. Uh, this, um, you can see it from, uh, from from, from the sky, and back in the back of the Roma Memorial Center, we have 22 um, ma mass graves of the Roma. This is not the only place where the Rom uh, where Roma were killed, since it was uh, not only in Jasenos, but also in other camps, but this is the single biggest one. Um, most of the Roma were killed um, immediately when the war started in 1942. Um, I'm not a historian, uh, I'm more uh, of an advisor in political documents, so these are slides uh, from uh, our team that uh, is only working uh, in the R R Roma Memorial Center. Uh, terminology, we, we sp spoke about it already, um, uh, it is very important to say that uh, Roma community refers to this um, uh, genocide in the Second World War by word uh, Samudari Pen. Prior, prior, as you know, um, they used the word Poriamos, but it's very important to us not to confuse it with Holocaust. As um, uh, our colleague from Germany said, uh, this is why we have separate um, uh, Roma monuments, and this is why uh, 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 we argue that the, um, uh, what happened to the Roma was very specific to the Roma, and uh, we in Croatia also unfortunately had um, in the independent state of Croatia, not to confuse it with the current state, we had racial laws that were inter introduced uh, 
uh, during the beginning uh, of the of the war, war uh, in in this region, and these uh, laws were implemented very quickly. As I said, most of the Roma uh, were killed already by 1942. Today we we don't have any survivors of uh, Samudari Pen in Croatia. The last one died uh, one year ago, uh, so we don't have uh, many. Uh, stories to tell with uh, uh, with people that uh, survived, unfortunately. These are uh, uh, examples from the newspapers, uh, from the history. Uh, this is a notice of mandatory Roma listing uh, in Zagreb, and these um, policies were implemented on the whole of territory of independent state of Croatia. That was also covering the uh, whole of Bosnia and Herzegovina and, and parts, uh, even parts of some other countries. Um, so these systematic dep deportations uh, happened until 1942. We will never know the exact numbers because uh, Roma were not uh, listed by uh, names and surnames uh, in uh, Yasenovac. Uh, we have uh, also, um, we also have uh, uh, stories uh, uh, on how they were deported, deported by uh, vegans, so we don't have exact numbers and we will no never have them. Uh, so, uh, Ustica, as I said, was a separate camp. It is also important to say that they were held um, separate from other uh, uh, prisoners in, in, in the camp. So these are the exact numbers, 16, 173 that we have, and these, uh, when I say that we have them, it's the official records of the Asenovac institution, and uh, to correct myself, it's 21, not 22 uh, mass graves. Uh, the site was marked in 1971, and it became uh, 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 the part of uh, the, the institution in uh, 1983. So the cemetery uh, that we have behind the Roma Memorial Center is actually run by the state institution called the Yasenovs Memorial Site, and the, the museum is, uh, is run by uh, Croatian Romanian Union, Kalisara. In future, we will see what will happen uh, with this. We hopefully, uh, for now, we are happy with the status of the uh, museum, but in the future, there, there might be some changes. This is uh, the, uh, the, the, the photo from the opening. In the, in, in the back, you can see the guy with the hat. I think that's Santino Spinelli's son. Oh, this one, yeah. Yeah, th this. yeah those are uh, because we, uh, as, uh, we cooperate with Santino yeah. very closely, and uh, we are currently also in one project. Uh, that uh, uh, in regard to 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 the Second World War. So these these are some more photos of 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 the museum. Uh, I want to also quote um, one professor, one Croatian professor. He is writing about uh, Roma in 2004, and he writes this. Uh, Roma in Croatia have citizenship issues. They are, not, they are not represented in the structure of the central government and very rarely at the local level. They are not represented in the Croatian parliament and he mentions that uh, political organizations of the Roma have almost no influence in uh, the political life of, of Croatia. So this was in 2004. Uh, this uh, changed from 2000 eight onwards, so just a few years later, when the dictionary came out and when uh, Kalisara started to work more, uh, this gradually started to change, and in 2012, uh, the first commem commemoration uh, for the Roma victims was held uh, um, on the Roma cemetery in Ustica, so prior, before the center was built. So from 2012 all the way to today, uh, we organize central, um, 
we organize central remembrance days. And it's also very important to say that the Croatian parliament also adopted this day as an official day, as well as the World Day of Romani language. So um, this is also what we try to uh, lobby for in other countries. We, all, uh, we also spoke um, with the, uh, here in, in the Catalan parliament about these in, in initiatives and we hope that other parliaments will uh, also uh, do this uh, as it was done in Croatia. When the Roma Memorial Center was built, we, um, we decided to build a, a, another memorial right next to it. So behind the Roma Memorial Center, we built a monument for all the victims of, of, of genocide of the Roma in the independent state of Croatia. And we did it uh, with uh, um, a monument that consists of 120 marble uh, plates uh, with uh, engraved names of all victims. So the whole list of, uh, of all victims is um, put there. You, you, we have some additional photos of this monument. Um, on the right, you can see a monument uh, to righteous among uh, nations uh, declared by Yad Vashem Hayriya. And she is the only known uh, Roma person that uh, has been declared uh, righteous among uh, nations by Yad Vashem. And this is the last project uh, that we had there in Ustica. We um, introduced a mo monument uh, dedicated to her. And she is uh, known uh, uh, because uh, she um, uh, saved a Jewish girl uh, in, uh, in, in Kosovo. So more photos of uh, the wall of pain. Uh, we are also very happy that we have um, support not only from the government but uh, by all public institutions. We are very proud that uh, last five years we have the central commemoration bro broadcasted on the Croatian national television live. So this is uh, something that uh, ha doesn't happen very often. It's very costly. Uh, and it was very hard to, to get the, the state television to follow this event, event, but we are happy to do it. On this photo here, you can see our prime minister uh, in the background, uh, there is Susanna Kirschmer, she's the president of uh, Croatian Romani Union. And uh, on the right, also on the photo, we have Alan Tahiri. He is the head of uh, uh, Office for Human Rights of the Croatian government, and he comes from the Roma community. Uh, so here you see the uh, prime minister with members of the Croatian government uh, ministers uh, in Ustica, and I have to say that this does, didn't ha happen one time, it happens every year. Uh, the center, of course, uh, does all kinds of different activities. Um, one of those is the summer school for uh, young uh, Roma people and also their friends, not only um, uh, Roma. And um, they um, organize a, a set of uh, lectures uh, prior to 2nd of August uh, every year. Um, and uh, we cooperate uh, in this project with other institutions, for example, Srebrenica Memorial Center uh, in Bosnia. So this is, we have, uh, it, it would take forever for, for me to uh, tell you about all projects, but um, there, there is many of them. Our goal is to include uh, the Roma uh, Memorial Center and the history of the uh, Roma in Croatia uh, in the curriculum and we are actively working on it. Uh, these are more photos from the, from the, uh, the uh, mass graves. These um, concrete lines are the lines where uh, were the limits of the concrete graves. Uh, this is uh, on the left you have the president of Croatia, the current Cro uh, president of Croatia visiting Ustica also. Okay, and this is uh, uh, a photo when uh, 
the Roma Memorial Center was opened with, uh, uh, of course, members of the government. Uh, I will leave some time for discussion because uh, I didn't even tell you all that I noted before uh, the presentation started. Uh, as I said before, here is Seo. Uh, he will stay with you here in Barcelona. <laughs> Uh, and uh, he he can be uh, the link. So if you don't, if you have any more questions, if you want to cooperate with us, uh, please contact him. And um, uh, hopefully we will uh, continue our good cooperation that we have with organizations in Barcelona. Thank you. Thank you very much for making us understand um, all the job that you have done in Croatia about Roma, Roma community. Congratulations also to the organization Calisara because I know that you are uh, doing a great job and a lot of activities to keep alive the Cynthia and Roma memory. Um, I'm glad to see the Roma Memorial Center in Ustica. So, yeah. I think that all the ideas that you gave us could also, even I know that, of course, there will be a lot of things to do. Um, all the ideas that you gave us will serve us to inspire us and to inspire other associations in, in Europe to keep on working for memory. Um, so here, thank you also uh, to Say, also the member of Calisara, because he is here with all of us. and. I'm sure that uh, the associations in the in the in the afternoon that they are more focused in, in local work, we can start uh, making more contacts and working all together. So I think we have time to one or two questions for the public. Well, I have. Ah, yeah. I don't know if. Puedo hablar en, en castellano, ¿verdad? En español. Eh, Can I speak in Spanish? Can I? Buen día. Buen día y felicidades para que esta jornada. Creo que es muy importante organizarla. I think that it's very important to organize workshops like this one. It is very important to create such a such a work session, such a workshop. But let me talk about a couple of uh, standpoints from our uh, Roma point of view. We've talked about uh, Finland and uh, Italy and Roma, but we, as uh, Roma people, we need to show the mechanisms uh, to activate ourselves and to think. And I am not sure if everyone understands uh, Spanish, but if not, uh, please. Mm, if not, you can use uh, simultaneous translation. So let me say that I am very happy to see the Roma Society present in this event. It's another way to show that uh, this is an interesting topic. When we talk about genocide or about I European or international organization, it's very important to mention Roma. But when we talk about uh, the local stage, when mm, we can say gypsies or gitanos in Spanish, but when we talk about genocides, it has to be Roma. When they talk about um, concentration camps or uh, death camps, uh, then it has to be Roma. After the Second World War, there has been a huge silence uh, 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 from the Roma peoples. Uh, we have uh, stepped aside uh, and we have kept quiet and it has taken us a lot of time and effort uh, to make uh, to make uh, the genocide known. Poraimos uh, hasn't been used for many years in Italy. We didn't know about these terms. Uh, there were many, many pressures. And nowadays, as uh, Emir said, uh, they chose to use uh, samudaripen. So that's the another term to discuss this same situation. When we talk about the Holocaust, the Roma Holocaust, we need to mention something very important. All of this the doesn't come 
from nowhere. There has been a strong uh, Roma activism. We've seen some images of Roma Nirosa. He had to do crazy things in order to obtain results. And this is so important. Uh, activism, activists such as myself, uh, said we never sleep uh, or Primo uh, Tardet, we never sleep. And uh, Roma phobia often takes up so much space of our time, we cannot move forward in other fields because we're always fighting this Roma phobia. So we don't have time to build our own identity because we're too busy fighting Roma phobia. Uh, uh, Finland mentioned that as well. And I can also talk about Italy because I am a, gypsy, uh, a Roma person from the former Yugoslavia, but I was born in Italy and I'm very familiar with the Italian situation. So first of all, we need to abolish uh, gypsy camps. That's the first step we need to uh, we need to take, uh, we need to do away with them. And in Spain, we do have the possibility to build this memory, but we also need to, to have this uh, uh, crazy ingredient like Romani Rose. We need to do something like they did in Italy to create this commission of truth as it was created in Germany. And that's where we will start. Uh, what happened here with this Arripende Romanos? What happened? There isn't much. This is only discussed on the 30th of July here, only on that date, but let's acknowledge this. Why don't we do that? Why don't we name streets after that? Because in Croatia, there are lots of movements of this. I think that Elena forgot to say that there's a whole park devoted to the 5th of November, International Day of uh, uh, the Romani language, Roma language. So. Constantino Spinelli and us, we all built the same first, the first movement. We collected money from our own pockets uh, to build that monument. And I think we need to create a, a, tr a truth commission and uh, to talk about the historic debt that we have uh, regarding uh, the Roma people, because uh, there's a lot to be done. And it is essential to take new steps to reconstruct that. There's also uh, the ling linguistic genocide. Gypsies uh, have uh, lost uh, the Kalo language. They don't uh, speak Romano anymore. So it is important to build and keep building. But it's also important to generate dialogues with uh, other Roma uh, and Sinti people to understand what's going on and to learn from good examples. I think that what's going on in Italy is not a good example. However, what's uh, happening in Germany or in Croatia is. So uh, Romani Rose, when we talk about the 2nd of August, and here I will give the floor to you, Taco, so that you mentioned a couple of things uh, about what we did in 2014, all that movement uh, led by young people, when we talk about uh, the 2nd of August, uh, when we talk about Romani Rose, who, with his money, created or built uh, the Auschwitz movement. So this ceremony was held every day. And in 2009, when we talked uh, about creating the movement of uh, and decent friendship, uh, look and uh, don't forget, this was done. So 2014 was a turning point in mm, making the 16th of May uh, known as the Day of Resistance. Uh, but uh, then in 2014, uh, there were over 2,000 people with survivors. So many of them are not there any longer, but I wish you could talk about this moment uh, for a second, if possible. Microphone, please. Microphone, please. With your permission, this is probably going to be my uh, final intervention because I'm not going to go anywhere else. Why? I respect everyone, but I'm tired of fighting and preaching to the desert. I've always said, please, let us make our own mistakes. You. Everybody, those you represent, you never allowed us to speak. And when we spoke, then we were silenced. So we're always uh, uh, st stepping on the same stone or stumbling on the same stone. The Nazi genocide caused 
500,000 gypsy victims or uh, Roman Sinti people. That's false. That's false. If you don't know, ask us questions. 34% of uh, the Roma and Sinti population died, 3 million gypsies. Now we're being told that we are 1.5 million. Please let us make mistakes if we if we if we if we may just ask and then we will answer thank you so much hello good morning i wasn't going to speak because i will be participating in this afternoon's uh, panel discussion but let me say that identities are not built as a laboratory or they are not uh, built uh, and uh, cast in plastic uh, identities are built in the coexistence with communities, in the living together with the community. So if we want to build our, an identity, that is difficult because identities are something that touch people's hearts, souls, and feelings. So communities cannot be built uh, with um, any kind of, well, with a uh, with projects of all sorts. Memories cannot be built on uh, empty projects. They need to be built with the acknowledgement uh, and collaboration of your elders and your communities. I cannot start collecting memories uh, no matter how unless there is a link, a bond between me and that community, unless my storytelling does not connect with that community. So let me add that we are now at a turning point. Those who are already the elder, that generation that connects uh, with uh, the generation of those who have uh, already left, uh, please let us compile our memories because when we leave, uh, it's going to be really difficult because our youth are simply in a different wavelength. That's what I wanted to say. Further comments or questions? Bernat. A question addressed to Chiara. The arrival of uh, Meloni and uh, the right wing to government, can that affect the Roma population in Italy? And then a question addressed to Emir. In the case of the Roma people history, how did the so Balkan War in the 90s affect the Roma point people? point in Italy today, not only for Roma people, but for, I think, everyone. And uh, for foreigners, uh, for poor people, for all uh, who believe in equality and human rights. And in particular, this year, Meloni um, did not talk so much about uh, Roma communities and nomad camps because she has uh, other priorities uh, fighting against uh, people coming from Africa and uh, migrants and and so uh, to fight against uh, left parties and so on. Anyway, I have to tell two things. In the past, Meloni was not a prime minister, but she was in the government, and our government was led by right-oriented parties, so a partnership between uh, Berlusconi, Forza Italia, I have to wash my mouth every time I say <laughs> Berlusconi, and uh, and uh, by Lega Nord, that is a racist party, born in the north part of Italy, fighting against the at the beginning the south part of Italy, and then spread all over our country, fighting against every. Um, 
minorities, uh, migrants, uh, uh, foreigners, and so on. And we had the prime minister of interior government called Salvini. He is not well educated in a cultural sense, <laughs> either in cultural sense, but also in a human sense. And so he promoted a campaign to collect all the finger printed of all Roma people in Italy. And there was a kind of little uprise, just little one, because just few person know and of course, uh, the prime minister didn't know that quite almost Roma living in Italy are Italian citizens. <laughs> because in the common mentality, Roma are not Italian, are not citizen. And it is um, forbidden in Italy to get fingerprints of citizen. Of course, if you go into the jail, if you commit a crime, you have to put your finger and tip it, the pin, the, um, the print, but not common people. And so this was the first step uh, up down against Roma communities. And this man now is not minister of interior government, but is Minister of Foreign Affairs. <laughs> so the, the wind is the same. And we have many problems con connected with nomad camps. So they put all Roma people in, mm, in the... Um, so not in the city center, but in uh, the, the great the suburbs of big cities, living in very bad condition, without a uh, school bus to go for children to go to school, without medical centers, uh, often without running water and electricity. And of course, this government is doing nothing about this problem. We have more than 2,000 nomad camps in Italy, most of them around Roma. And I work with three nomad camps in the south part of Italy, in Naples. We had a project to trying to meet um, teachers, activists, and um, social activists to uh, teach them something about uh, uh, Roma peoples uh, and their cultures because they are quite unknown, because often uh, children drop out of school. Okay, and another problem that we uh, had in past two years is that uh, a Roma family called the Santa Monica is connected with organized criminality in Camorra. And so the, this is a great problem, because now not only Roma are tips and so on, and all these stereotypes, but now they are connected with organized um, criminality. And so uh, things are going worse and worse. Just an example, there is a TV series called Casa Monica, in which the bad are Sinti and Roma. So that's it. Uh, yes, I only wanted to ask uh, how the, the war in, in Western Balkans during the 90s and early 2000 uh, affected uh, Roma communities in, uh, in Croatia or in, in the former uh, Yugoslavia. Thank you. Uh, you saw during uh, the presentation uh, from our colleague uh, uh, from Germany uh, that uh, 
most of them uh, moved. Uh, we refer it to as the fifth wave of migration, um, the move of the Balkans Roma to the Western Europe, and this destroyed whole communities of Roma, uh, especially during the war in Kosovo, where the where the Roma were stuck in between two uh, parties that were in, in war and none of these two parties were, were in the favor of Roma. So large uh, settlements of Roma, for example in Mitrovica, they are almost completely destroyed. They live in France, they live in Germany, they live in Sweden, they live uh, everywhere else. Uh, the same happened to, some something similar happened to the Roma in Bosnia and, uh, of course, uh, so some parts of uh, Roma community in Croatia. But uh, during these times, of course, all people suffered so, but um, we, we know that the Roma community suffered even more because they were not, uh, uh, they, they were not the participants, they were the, the, the bystanders. But uh, I also want to tell you one thing about the Croatian Roma. Uh, many of them took up the arms and they fought with the Croatian army against the Serb uh, aggression. So Kalisara actually uh, made a book uh, about the Roma uh, uh, soldiers in the Croatian army. Uh, and we made even a doc documentary uh, uh, about it with interviews of the Roma that participated in the homeland war. So this is also a good way to uh, present the Roma community in, 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 uh, in a way that they also are part of the society and that they actively participated in the creation of a new society in Croatia. They were not only uh, not always only bystanders. So uh, this movie is also available on YouTube. Uh, I think it even even has titles uh, in English about the 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 the, the particip participation of the Croatian Roma in in the war. Thank you, Emir. Uh, thank you, Chiara, and Leif and Anu for sharing with us. Um, the, the historical memories in your country and all the experience it has inspired us a lot. And thank you all to the public uh, for your inspiration and your time and your activism uh, to make uh, Roma history something more popular and recognized.